Hi hey everybody, this is Ross. Uh, in today's video, we're inside the greenhouse. I thought I would show you guys the trees that I planted in here last spring um, to give you guys an update on the fig trees that are now being trained as Japanese espaillets, as low cordons, um, however you guys want to term it. To give you guys an update, show you this training process, even update you guys here on the capra fig which we have planted in here, which is a multi-grafted capra fig that will eventually get some profici for and uh, hopefully colonize the fig wasp. But the whole main goal in this greenhouse was to get these trees established in this particular form, which I'm gonna break down here in a minute, but for purposes of commercial production. This is um, really the best idea I had, I think, in terms of how to train these trees, how to get these trees in a state that's ready for market every year and reliable every year. You know, really making use of the space in this greenhouse because what I normally like to do is actually use this space as a multi-purpose for my potted fig trees. I'll grow um, or I'll leave, I'll move all my fig trees in pots out of the cold and put them in here for about six months out of the winter time. And that keeps them again away from the cold and keeps them happy and healthy. And then I turn on the heater in here, nice little space heater, which warms up the trees in here, gets the soil temperatures warm. Even these, these young trees in here that we planted, they got crammed in, really didn't get a whole lot of light, but the fact that you know, they had a ton of heat from the heater that we turn on at night. And then obviously the greenhouse keeps that heat in during the day and amplifies it. Um, it is just absolutely wonderful for these trees. And it's been a, a nice proven success at this point, preliminary proven success that these trees can do really well in this environment. Um, now the question really just becomes, would I rather have this form of a Japanese espalier or a low cordon, or would I rather have something underneath these low tunnels like we have that are cut back to six to 12 inches every year um, and they're pruned in more of a bush shape, but it's a similar principle. We keep coming back to these permanent structures and they form sort of like something like a spur, like you would see on your grapevine. So it's kind of like we're spur pruning these fig trees every year we come back to that, that same height. We set up the permanent structures right now. That's what we're doing. I wanna show you this right now. Let's come in actually and show you that because what this is essentially doing is that we've got ourselves a main trunk. You can see down here at the base. This main trunk comes up about a foot and then we topped it. It then sent out these two branches, these two arms, which were gonna be the the permanent arms, they're nice and vigorous, nice and healthy. And this one we actually have just tied down to a stake. And this is what's gonna happen. A foot high off the ground will be the permanent arm of the fruit tree. Now we still have to let this guy grow a bit taller before we can do the same thing on the other side, but that's the same principle. And then what we do is once we tie this down, I take off the tip. You can see that the growth tip is no longer there. We topped it. And what that's gonna do is actually form fruits along this branch. This entire branch is gonna be covered in nice pan uh, panache figs. And then it's gonna send up new shoots. And those new shoots are gonna grow upwards towards the light. And that's gonna form all kinds of new shoots coming up. And that is gonna be the fruiting branches in a, in a normal year when these trees are have set up their form properly, they're of age, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then every year we cut those fruiting branches back that are coming up like this. We cut those back to this main cordon system every year. And it's really that simple. Um, and as I said, you know, you can really tell on this panache that it is gonna fruit. If I topped it right now, it would put out fruits. In fact, it'll probably put out fruits on its own. I did top actually over here a couple of these branches. This is uh, my Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross that looks also fantastic. We're getting the cordons, the, the branches set up. And the reason I topped one of them is because there's four branches coming out. And I only really want two of these branches to come out and form the arms of the, of the system. So I topped the others, get it to form some fruits, et cetera, et cetera. I could probably top or pinch this one down here. 
But that tree, that tree is doing really well. And also, so is this Col de Don Blanc that really I wasn't sure was gonna do much of anything this year, but it really came out of dormancy quite well. It was really heavily shaded. We moved a lot of the pots out of here in different stages, and then finally it got some light, and finally it's off, off to the races. And actually, it has the double dots along all the nodes. I topped it, it's gonna fruit, and it's also then going to put out the new branches uh, that hopefully will be the the new arms of the cordon. So that's what we want um, is to get it to the right height and then top it. So it's it reached that one foot. We've topped it, and then again once we get the arms to the right height, then we top the arms and tie them down to a stake. But what I'm going to do actually here in the greenhouse in the future is actually get myself some eye hooks. I don't have them yet. It's tough to get to hardware stores nowadays, but I'm gonna get some eye hooks and drill them into the wood here. You can see this wood that the, the greenhouse is supported onto because we beefed up this, this frame. We're gonna drill some eye hooks and then run this, this 14 gauge wire here is gonna run through those eye hooks all around the interior on the edges of the interior of the greenhouse. And instead of having stakes, these branches here will be tied down to this wire and that uh, will be there for quite some time, that wire system to help keep these uh, trees of the right form. And then, um, so that's kind of the gist of what these trees are doing. I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. We'll have to see again what form, what style of training is really beneficial uh, for these trees for the most production. You know, I have them spaced on the, in the low tunnels, really two feet apart on center, three rows of them underneath the low tunnels. You know, how much fruit is this particular tree gonna put out in the given space that it has? It really doesn't have that much space because all these trees are gonna be all along the exterior and they're gonna then send up shoots towards us all around the edge. They're not gonna grow towards that way. Um, we're gonna basically form the spurs coming out this way and they're gonna form these branches. And if you think about how much space is in here, there, isn't, there really isn't a whole lot. It's a six by eight space. I have four fig trees in the ground in here. This is the capra fig. And the capra fig actually put out a number of bravas that eventually fell off. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the age and the conditions of these trees. Just earlier in the season, the conditions weren't really all that great in here, but they're getting established and they need to form between these two varieties grafted onto the same rootstock. They need to form um, a reliable crop of three different sets of crop, the Mame, the Mamoni, and the Profici. If I can get those three to reliably show up in here every year, I'm going to be way better off and I'm going to actually have myself some Profici that I can get some ca from California that has the wasps in it and will actually uh, colonize inside these overwintering crops. And this is just gonna continue that, that process of getting the, uh, you know, the colonization of the blastophaga. So that's pretty cool to then be able to also pollinate these trees in here and all the trees I have throughout the yard is to add a, another element to this whole commercial potential thing. Cause that's what we're doing here, right? We're growing these figs for commercial potential as a big experiment. We're gonna see what the best method is, how all this works as a trial, as an experiment, so that when we do this for real, you know, we got all the kinks worked out. So I think this is pretty legit, pretty awesome way to do this. My friend Vinny, by the way, in England, he's probably watching right now. Um, my friend Vin, he, uh, he's got his fig trees in greenhouses a very similar size to these. You know, this is a uh, six by eight Harbor Freight greenhouse. And the way that Vin is doing it is he actually has them kind of just put like all along the edges. And I think that's sort of a, a worse use of space. No offense to Vin. But if you do it like this, it, as an espalier in a low cordon, you're really controlling where the growth goes and what space the growth is allowed to occupy. And what we can also do is that, let's say in this little area here, 
we have a number of shoots coming up from this cordon. Uh, we can also limit and space the shoots out the distance that we want. These leaves are pretty big. Panache is a very vigorous variety. So if we have really big leaves on these trees, we don't want to be shading out the other leaves and the other branches. Uh, so you got to space these out to have really the most optimal production, the most optimal um, spacing in this, in this small environment. That's, in my mind, the best way to do this uh, is to actually have good spacing between each of these spurs and then, of course, the new shoots on those spurs. So I imagine, you know, on this tree here, which is actually six foot wide, it's going to be, we'll probably have one shoot coming up, you know, maybe like right here starting. Um, then another one about right here, another one right here here. So maybe along this six foot span, it's really only going to be maybe four to six, maybe eight shoots at most that come up from the cordon system. And then maybe along the other wall, because this is a lot longer, maybe this will be 10 shoots. So I'll limit the number of shoots. Um, of course, they're going to grow very vigorously. They're going to probably reach the tops of this greenhouse, but um, yeah, we're making space, making use of the space for different trees in here. It's just, it's crazy um, to think, I think Vin has like a lot more in some of his, but he may have some larger greenhouses um, that I'm not aware of. I don't think he has the exact size as these, but point is, you know, there's just some food for thought out there. I thought you guys would want to know. I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope this all works out. Um, I think it will. There's a lot of potential in here that I'm seeing so far. And maybe you guys can do something like it. So I'll talk to everybody soon. Take care. Check out the blog, figboss.com, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you guys soon.